Good morning, everybody. It is indeed a privilege to come here and talk to you on the occasion of the 100th birth anniversary of my esteemed teacher, Professor B. Ramamurthy. It has been my privilege to have been associated with him for several decades, and this talk is dedicated in his memory. I would like to start with what happened in 1980. A few months before I wrote the MCH final examination, we had a mock exam, and the topic was discuss the management of trigeminal neuralgia, 1980. I thought I had done a fairly good job, but Dr. Kalyan Raman, who went through my answer paper, made a statement which has been unforgettable and is still valid even 42 years later. He said, I quote, when there is more than one method for managing a clinical condition, it clearly means that none of the various methods are perfect. Choosing the right method for the right patient at the right time displays experience, clinical wisdom, and maturity. Dr. Kalyan Raman told me that I should have started my answer paper with this sentence but this would have reflected that I was a mature neurosurgeon. 42 years later, this statement still holds good. We're all familiar that trigeminal neuralgia has been in existence since 1671. Interestingly, the first radio surgery for trigeminal neuralgia was done in 1951. A prototype guiding device linked to a dental X-ray machine performed a stereotactic gangliotomy similar to the concept of a percutaneous technique. This was done by Lars Lexel. Uh, sorry about this, uh, one technical glitch. Okay. Stereotactic radio surgery for trigeminal neuralgia can be defined as a non invasive, ultra precise delivery of a single high dose of irradiation to an image guided portion of the trigeminal nerve with or without including the dorsal root entry zone. Radiation disrupts transmission of pain signals and pain relief occurs gradually about 10 days to two weeks after the onset of the procedure. Radio surgery can be done in various ways, the gamma knife, the cyber knife, and in 2020, even the linear accelerator. The choice of the particular equipment depends on system availability, physician training, and of course, insurance reimbursement. Outcomes are not very different on non-isocentric and isocentric radiosurgery systems. Irrespective of the modality chosen, the dosimetry is similar. Selection for radio surgery for trigeminal neuralgia depends on various factors. It is not just a lack of suitability for microvascular decompression or other invasive procedures, drug intolerance. It also depends to a large extent on patient choice and the physician's choice, of course. We are accustomed to what is called EBM or evidence-based medicine and globally, the Barrow Neurological Institute pain intensity scale is used to measure response to treatment. Age, gender, duration of symptoms, interval between treatments do not, I repeat, do not have an effect on the ultimate outcome for radio surgery. Optimal dosing. Though almost half a century has evolved since radio surgery was started, there is still controversy regarding the exact dose to be chosen. And most important, targeting strategies. Ultimately, it is not so much as being able to deliver radiation, it is being able to define the target. And here also, there is some scope for difference of opinion. When using the gamma knife, we all know that cobalt half-life has a half-life of 5.26 years. And there are studies which have shown that perhaps the treatment outcome could di differ depending on the viability of the cobalt. Uh, one major study, 239 gamma knife radiosurgical procedures done over a five-year period showed that the clinical outcome was apparently consistent and therefore the initial half-life is not too critical. The accepted target in all radiosurgery systems 
is four to six millimeters along the trigeminal nerve with or without one to two millimeters of the dorsal root entry zone in the palms. Success is extremely relative. Initial success, meaning six months to one year after the procedure, has been reported to be as high as 93%. However, the longer the follow-up, the greater the recurrence of pain. In most cities, pain recurs within 50% if followed up for more than 10 years. Retreatment options and results after acute and short-term failure are different compared to the delayed recurrence. Again, treatment and retreatment plan depends on the initial pain response, the freedom from pain duration, the dose which is administered originally, the volume of the nerve actually treated, which means the length of the nerve treated, and whether the DREZ was included or not. 61% were pain-free without medication. I'm now talking of the gamma knife. We'll talk about the cyber knife and line act later. 29% were pain-free with medication and 10% the procedure was a failure. This again is about six months to nine months after the procedure. Sensory dysfunction, meaning procedure-related morbidity of 10.5% occurred for initial radio surgery and when radio surgery was repeated, it was as high as one in five. 50% of those undergoing repeat radio surgery with the gamma knife had excellent or good outcomes, provided the follow up was within 14.4 months. Again, the longer the follow up, the higher the recurrence. Repeat radio surgery, the gamma knife, there was an increased risk for new onset type of trigeminal nerve dysfunction. A third radio surgery has also been done occasionally. In one report of 18 patients, the median pain relief was 3.88 years. However, as expected, the complication rate following a third radio surgery procedure is definitely higher. 10 out of 18 had new or worsening facial numbness. One had corneal aberration, possibly a neurotrophic keratopathy as well. Now let's talk about the cyber knife. The cyber knife is becoming more and more sophisticated. And over the last two decades, the use of the cyber knife is almost as high as use of the gamma knife. Initially, because of unsafe MRI CT fusion, CT cystonography was used in a CK planning. However, in the last couple of years, technology has become so sophisticated that precise co-registration of CT scan and MR is now possible and cystonography has been dispensed with. Bony landmarks, changing the bony window level window width to ensure the bone landmark indicates entrance of the trigeminal nerve into the metal scale. In the cyber knife, the nerve length chosen while drawing, contouring the target is about six millimeters. The total volume is about 40 cubic millimeters. The average length within the six millimeters normally receives a dose of as high as 60 gray, 4.5 millimeters if it is non isocentric, and 4.4 millimeters for isocentric cyber knife using a 5 millimeter collimator. Repeat radio surgery results using the cyber knife for recurrent trigeminal neuralgia has been shown to be independent of the system used. In other words, it doesn't matter too much whether you're using the gamma knife, the cyber knife, or even a linear accelerator. One, in one study of 138 cyber knife radio surgery, the first treatment, 75 centigrade gray was used, and this had pain control, the BNI improving from class one to three A. 93.5% had pain relief for six months, which was reduced to 76% at the end of three years. The photograph on the left with a magnified version shows how very clearly one is able to see the trigeminal nerve when you do a one mm thin section of the MRI. The dose fall off in the gamma knife is steeper compared to the cyber knife. And of course, the total experience of radio surgery for trigeminal neuralgia is certainly higher using the gamma knife. 
the root entry zone when the root entry zone is targeted 21 to 28 gray is the maximum dose when it is when the total dose prescribed is 70 gray the root entry zone gets 21 to 28 gray the medial most portion of the temporal node should not get more than 45 gray and uh, if it is reduced to less than 15 gray per millimeter of medial temporal radio necrosis at a later stage can be avoided one must remember that the total cumulative dose to the brain stem and other critical areas is very critical this is particularly important in ru in retreatment and in retreatment the maximum combined dose of the two treatments or even the third treatment cannot should not exceed 180 gray maximum what are the complications following radio surgery for trigeminal nerve obviously the complication would depend on the initial dose and whether it has been repeated or not facial numbness has been described and this seems to be directly proportional to the increasing dose to the brainstem and if multiple treatments are given Paresthesia occurred in 6.25% and hypoesthesia in 2.5% in those treated with gamma 9. A low grade discomfort in trigeminal neuralgia has been attributed to a gradual radiation induced remyelination. The longer the nerve length within the target zone, the more the complication rate. Interestingly, even if a larger length of nerve is targeted, there is no increase in the freedom from pain. In other words, irradiating a longer length of the trigeminal nerve does not guarantee that you will be pain free for a long time. No one in India has sufficient experience of radio surgery for the trigeminal nerve, and certainly follow up is critical. Therefore, I think this particular slide is the most important slide in the stock. This is a meta-analysis of 65 studies involving 6,461 patients. 45 of these studies were done using the gamma knife. 511 patients were studied using linear accelerator. And recently, nine patients, the cyber knife was used. Uh, I won't go into the details. These are only of interest to people actually deploying radio surgery and not necessarily important for non radio surgery neurosurgeon. The maximal doses you can see here varied from 60 to 97. Pain free period without medication ranged from 28.6 to 100%. Complications include dysesthesia, paresthesia deafferentation pain and very very rarely even keratitis the conclusion of this meta analysis with extensive follow up was that radio surgery is a safe and effective therapy for drug resistant trigeminal neuralgia a number of consensus statements have been made and endorsed by the international society for stereotactic radio surgery again to sum to summarize 500 peer-reviewed articles have been written so far on radio surgery for trigeminal nerve and the mean maximum doses, the range of this thing, all this have already been mentioned. The freedom without pain, from without medication, the mean, do, mean duration was 53.1% for gamma knife, 49.3% for linac, and 56.3% for cyber knife once again reiterating that the actual equipment is used is not so critical and it depends entirely on the availability of the radio surgery equipment and the competence of the physician doing the specific procedure recurrence rates also are more or less similar for the gamma knife the linac and for the cyber knife two gamma knife series reported 30% and 45% of patients were brain free without medication even 10 years after the procedure here are some images taken from the literature frameless uh, stereotactic radio surgery using the cyber knife you can see how the retrogasarian section of the trigeminal nerve was targeted excluding the root entry zone the brain stem was kept outside the 20 percent curve which means it got less than 15 gray when the iso dose line 
the cranial nerve 8, the cochlea, and the inner ear receive doses far below the respective tolerance limit. The nerve focal contrast enhancement 12 months after treatment witnesses the precision of the dose delivery along the nerves. Here again, you can see imaging is the most critical part in any radiosurgical treatment. Of course, treatment planning is important, but unless you define the target volume, and therefore you must have an absolutely foolproof MRI, as you can see in this picture, we are able to see the entire course of the trigeminal nerve, its entry into the brainstem, and so on and so forth. Adjacent critical structures are equally important. These are again examples of different types of targeting when we simulate, including the retrogesarian portion of the trigeminal nerve. And the differences in color show the dose fallout. And you can see a dose as high as 80 gray is delivered to the trigeminal nerve, and the cisternal part of it is actually getting 90 gray. So one needs to be very clear when you're drawing the trigeminal nerve. It's entry into the brainstem, and this is a Lexel gamma plan snapshot demonstrating a typical radio surgery plan targeting the cisternal portion. Yet the figures showing very clearly how the brainstem is contoured, the cochlea, the vestibular component, the cochlear component, every one of this should be combined. Uh, I, I am no longer actively involved in the actual treatment planning. I understand my colleagues have done as many as 20 cases at the Apollo Speciality Hospital over the last 10 years of trigeminal neurology using the cyber knife. This is one paper published by the medical physicist. And here you can see that these are very, very technical pictures of more interest to medical physicists showing the comparative analysis between a 5 millimeter and a 7.5 mm collimeter used in cyber knife radio surgery. So what would be the take home message? The take home message would be exactly what I was told 42 years ago, that whenever there is more than one method in skinning a cat, there are many ways to skin a cat, but obviously none of them have to be perfect. In the properly selected patient, you must be very clear on the limitations of radio surgery. But since radio surgery can be repeated a second time or even a third time, Previous microvascular decompression, medical treatment for a long time does not preclude radio surgery. Radio surgery should also be considered to be in the treatment armamentarium, and the actual choice should be customized, tailor made, taking into account what the patient wants. I think this is equally important. Thank you once again for giving me this opportunity to share with you some of our knowledge on radio surgery.